So you can even hear me without this one, right? But it helps a lot. Okay? Thank you so much. You love me, huh? Yeah, a little bit higher. Yeah. Not much. Yeah? I think that's good. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so what is this? Roses are red. Do I even care? Violet are blue? Are you kidding me? I will never love someone. Am I reading it right? The way I love you. Are you I love you unconditionally. Who are you? What? Look up. It's me. God. Really, God, you love me? I don't even know what love is. Where is the love in all my miseries and my sufferings? Explain it to me, God. Where is the love? Amen. So that is just an introduction, okay? <laughs> Are you ready to stay up to 7 o'clock? I heard that you're only up to 5.30, right? So you will miss the other part. Okay, so thank you so much for a very warm welcome. Thank you so much for loving me. At least, you know, I knew that when I come here, I'm loved. I'm very much loved in Brampton as well. Okay, <laughs> because maybe my pastor is watching right now, so I will be in trouble if I don't say that, okay? So, uh, a blessed Sunday to everyone. And once again, thank you so much for the privilege to be with you right now. And we know that February is a love month. That's why I have a heart here, okay? So it's a love month. And it's good to at least celebrate. At least a month is uh, devoted to celebrate um, love. But love should not only be once a month or once in a year, right? Love should be a daily thing for all of us, especially for the believers, okay? So... How many of you, okay, have already had plans for Valentine's Day? Oh, the couple, hey, please treat me, treat me, save some money, okay? No one? Oh my gosh, I think I have to, uh, to uh, have a Valentine's Love Day, you know, for a month. Nobody yet? But it's okay, you know, it's a couple of days away. So maybe some of you still, you know, wondering, is, still, is there still love at this point in time with all the things that we are seeing, wars, you know, chaos all over the world, right? So where is the love right now? So, um, and that is the title of my message, where is the love, okay? So let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great time that you have gathered us together again, oh Lord, to hear your message about love, oh God. Father, I pray that your love will resonate to our souls today or for everyone who is here and even to those people who are watching us online. Lord, thank you for your love and we pray, oh Lord God, that because of your love, we will be able to love others as well. Lord, let your will be done in our midst and use your servant, oh Lord God, as your mouthpiece. We honor you, we glorify you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Okay, do you like the little monologue that I did? Okay, do you want more of that next time around, okay? <laughs> Not today because we are only have a couple of up to 5.30, right? Okay, so uh, where is the slide? You know, this is the problem here and there, not here. Because in Brampton, it's here I can read, right? <laughs> okay, so the word love and the way it expresses at the time, right? So maybe those people who are of my age, you can relate how we do, way how we say love during that time. It's more of demonstrating it through actions. And then, so let's trace a bit how love evolved. So first, from agape love, which is from the love of the Father, which is unconditional, the perfect love. And because God created the first men and women, they have this eros or romantic love, right? So... Those romantic love is only for couple, okay? For couple, <laughs> okay? Or because of the romantic love or eros, they bore a children, right? So, to eros, and now we have what we call 
familiar, family love, right? Because they have children, so a love of a parent to a children. Children love to their parents, okay? And after that, they increase in community. So that's the reason we also have what we call pilia love. So without any malice, you can say to the person on your right and to the person of your left, first whether that is a brother or a sister, or say, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Okay? So because of that pilia love, the brotherly love, that's why we can say I love you to each other without malice. Okay? But maybe some of you say, hey, I really love this person romantically. So it can wait later. Okay? Okay. So let's see what about. And as we know, the word love evolves in the same way, the way it is expressed nowadays. So before, it's more of demonstrating it. Now, we use uh, poetry, songs, dance, icons. You put a lot of icons when you send messages to your friends. And now we even have like this and like this, right? Okay? So, let's ask Mr. Google what love is all about, okay? So he says it is a universal language. So that transcends countries. Why are these things are not working? Maybe it's just here. Countries, borders, barriers, differences. Love bonds people to live and work in harmony. Okay? Love is an intense feeling. That's why when somebody is in love, oh my gosh, as if, as if the person is floating on the air. You know, always smiling, you know. Sometimes even talking to themselves, right? Okay, and can wait for the time to really the love of his or her life, okay? So, <clears throat> so it's a great interest and pleasure in something. So let's dig a little bit further. Love, when used in truth and in the goodness of God, it can change your life and other people's lives. Because as we know in John 10, 10b, says that I have come and I have come to give you life to the full. Okay, so the love later on, we will realize that love comes from life and the giver of our life, okay? So, the other thing is, however, when there is a however, we dangerous, right? However, if the word love is used with evil intention, it brings disorder, chaos, and ultimately distractions to individuals, families, community, and to the whole world as a whole. And we can see this. This is the agenda of the enemy, right? So the agenda of the enemy in John 10, 10 is the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Okay. So why do you think that the four-letter word is so powerful? Can somebody answer? No, you don't need to answer, okay? So... Where is the love come from? Right? Because it's so powerful, it can move the heart of people, can bring people together. If you really want to know where is the love come from, your ultimate source is not Mr. Google, but the Bible. Why my husband did not give the Bible to me? <laughs> I told him that is part of my uh, thing. Okay, thank you, my lovey dabby. Okay. Ah, look at that, love, love. Okay, so if you want to know where is the love come from, your ultimate source is none other than the written love letter of God to us, the Bible. So if there is something that you really have to embrace every single day, it's the Bible. Especially when you're alone, especially if you are disappointed. No, it's good to have it in your cell phone, but do you know that, you know, it can change? But this one, you know, the older the Bible, the, the more writing it says, meaning to say you're really reading the love letter of God to you, right? So if your Bible has been sitting there for the longest time, it's look brand new. Oh my gosh, right? It's, that is not for display. You know, God's love letter is for us to read so that you will feel the love of God every single day. Amen? Wow. Okay? So, in 1 John 4, 7, 8, yeah. So, let's see what's happening in 1 John 4, 7, 8. It's 
dear, dear friends, this is you and me. Let us love one another for love, where? Comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. So let's digest it slowly and lovingly. Okay? So first, it says here that love comes from where? From God. So it's not man's idea. Right? So uh, it's good that it's, it doesn't come from men. Because as I said a while ago, if it came from men, there is a tendency that that four-letter words, love, can be abused for personal interest. But God, because, uh, praise the Lord, it came from God. God will not, it's always for our benefit. Okay? So it's not from men. So God, as we know, God is eternal. He is outside of time, no beginning, and end was never been alone. Do you know that? That God has never been alone. So even before he could, God is not alone. So don't ever think that, you know what, maybe God is lonely. That's why he need to create man. No. Okay? God, even before he created you and me, he's never been alone. Why? Because God is already have a love fest with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, that is what we call the triune God. One God in three person, God in essence, and God in three person. Okay? So, he's never been alone. So, that's why God, even before he created you and me, he knows what love is all about. Right? So, if we want to know what love is, we need to ask the expert. We need to know who is the author of love. Like, for instance, if you're looking for a house, you will not go with me because you will be lost. Because I know nothing about real estate, right? But if you ask me something to do with, you know, human beings, working with uh, those people with mental health, I think I can somehow help you. So the same way, if we really want to know what love is all about, it is God, okay? He is the author of love. So even before you and me has been created, God is not alone. Okay, so God, because of his love, God, you know, that is his helps definition. If you ask me who is God, God is love. That is one of the attributes of God. It's like telling you now, hey, I'm Banji Himson. I'm a woman, okay, I'm Filipino Canadian. That, uh, those are the things that define who I am. So the same thing when we talk about God, one of the attributes of God, he is love. That's his definition. That is a fact that cannot be changed. I think everyone is becoming so serious. <laughs> okay, so the other one is love is not based on just emotion. It's based on decision. You know what? There is also a danger and then Normally, you know, people, uh, us, you know, we have a tendency to be just emotionally with the things that we do, we, even with how we love other people, right? So based on the events, you can love the person. Like, for instance, if the person, oh my gosh, he's so cute, he's so poggy, I really love him. And all of a sudden, something happens, that beautiful, good-looking guy or woman become, you know what I mean, Right? So the love is only based on the emotion on that time. But when God, but God love is based on decision. And let me prove you how it works, okay? So when God created you and me, okay, he made the decision to create you and me according to his image, okay? So not only that, when uh, according to his image, he give us, uh, give us the Dominion of everything that he prepared before he even created uh, you and me. And when men, you know, we know that because of the serpent there, they, ties, they committed sins, they repel against God, and the rest is history. So God made the decision immediately in Genesis 3.15 to, uh, to make a plan for redemption. It was a decision of God. Despite of our unrighteousness, God immediately made a decision that one day, you know, you and me will be able to come back to him and have that love pass again. Amen? 
Unlike men, you know, it's based on emotion. You know what? You don't have any money. I don't like you. That's why, you know, that till death do us part is no longer like that. Till death do us apart. Right? Right? A a am I making sense here? Yeah, right? So it is conditional. When you are not doing what I told you to do, nah, maybe you're not. Right? But God like that. So regardless of who we are, God still loves us. Because it's based, that is a decision that he makes because he loves us so much. Okay, so the word love, you know, because of the limited English that we have, sometimes we use the same, the word love to express our love to our honey, duly, our honey, right? And then all of a sudden, you see something that you love. You say, you know what? I love this dog too. So immediately, <laughs> you love your honey. And then all of a sudden, oh, I love this dog too, right? So for the lack, for the lack of, you know, uh, words to express what is the intense feelings that you have. That's why, you know, the, uh, the word in English sometimes is limited to express everything about, you know, how we feel from the inside, right? That's why in the beginning, I defined to you that there are, you know, in the Bible, there are four kinds of love. Amen? So hopefully, you know, just use the, you know, I like your hair. You know, I like your peppers, you know, I like your food that you cook. As more than to, you know, expressing your love towards the person, right? So maybe we can, you know, start using love for the person that you really love and use the word like to express your intense feeling towards that. Oh, I like my career. I like the car. Oh, I like my house. And then I love the people that lives in that house. Right? Amen? So you put value on the people versus the material things. Amen? Okay. So, the last one is I told you that God is love. So when we define God, He's love. No more than us. That's who He is. That is the self-definition of God. That is the truth about God. Okay? So, when God created you and me, you know, as compared to all the things that he has created, he just speaks the word. Right? Let there be light. Boom. What else? Let this whatever, whatever. Boom, boom. Right? And now, when God created, when God decided to create you and me, wow, he started with something. I, he kneeled down and picked the dirt. I cannot kneel down so much because I might not, okay? <laughs> he put that dirt in his hand, in the palm of his hand, and for sure, when God is molding that dirt, he's talking to that, you know, dirt, right? And then eventually it become a form of human form, right? He said, you know what? I created you. You are the apple of my eyes. So that's why when somebody told you that nobody, go back to God. Because God told you when he's molding you in the palm of his hand, right? He's telling you, you are the apple of my eyes. I know the number of your hair. Here you come again. So people who lose their hair, okay? Because of worrying, because of anxiety, you will be accountable to God. Because God has counted your hair, okay? And not only as you age, sometimes, I, I, me, I have, so don't even, remembering all the names, remember your face, but don't, don't ask me about your name. But God, you know what? Out of the billion, he called you by your, by your name. He knows you. So stop making so much makeover, because, you know, may God may be confused. Oh, my gosh. Why is this person so t totally different from the time that I created him? Okay? Don't try your very best to always pretend like you're not. Okay? Because God make you unique, which is good. Okay? There is only one you. So in the big puzzle, the simple puzzle will not be complete without you. Okay? So it's important that you know that you are not an accident. You are preciously created by God. For what? For his purpose. 
Okay? So that when you want to do your purpose as well, go back to God. Because He's the one who created you. Amen? Okay. So, now, going back to that dirt, so God is molding dirt, and then, all of a sudden, it looks like a human form. And you know what God did? He, he breathed in the nostril of that human uh, mad, you know, the dirt, like this. That it sounds like, right? And because of that God's breath, that dirt becomes life. That's why, because of God's love, he created you and me. And because of God's love, because of that dirt, and because of God's breath, that dirt in human form has life. Okay? So God's love is synonymous to life. Okay? So the four truths about God's love is life. I love acronyms. Okay? So let's see one by one. L stands for loving. Okay? So the first thing about God's love is loving. Life is loving. God, spirit and soul and love can offer, right? I love you because of okay, the love presented in the, to the righteous of our Why? Jesus did not, although he became man, he commit sins. So it's not because of your religion, it's not because of your works. It's good to do works. It will be just but it is only through the blood, through confessing that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, so that through his death on the cross, that is the only thing that satisfies the righteous judgment of God because of our sins. Amen? Okay, so in 1 Samuel 16, 7, so we're still in love. So we can read here, but the love, but the Lord said, do not consider his appearance or his height. Praise the Lord, you know, because if the appearance is height, I will not be included there. For I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. As I told you a while ago, God made you unique, right? So he doesn't want you to be like the one who's sitting. Oh, praise the Lord. Maybe you're saying, oh, good. I'm not like him, Right? Right? So he makes you unique. He's not looking at how you look, but in your heart. Okay? What is in your heart? Do you really love God? And there is only one you, as I said a while ago. Right? No one can. And maybe that is what my husband will be telling. Yes, praise the Lord, there is only one bungee. <laughs> Sister Banji, or else it will be too, pickle, too difficult for me to handle uh, two Banjis. Okay? So, in John 15, 12, it says here, so, we look at the appearance of the person. If the person doesn't qualify, you know, on our list, so you know what? I cannot love that person. Look at how she looks. Look at her. And you know what? She has no education. She's like this, like that. She can hardly speak English, you know. Her English is was, where, what, right? Or she's not, she's somebody that will always ask you favor, right? But good that God doesn't look that way, the same we judge other people. He looks into our heart, okay? So God says in John 15, 12, my command is to what? Love each other as I have loved you. It's a command. It's not a choice. You know, especially us, if we claim that we are believers and followers of God, and it's so difficult for us to love other people, it doesn't make sense, right? It doesn't make sense. If there are people who cannot love others, hope those people who doesn't have God's love in them. But if you're saying you are a followers and believers of Christ, this is your DNA, to love one another. It's not a choice. It's just overflow that you love it's the person beside you, right? Whether that person is somebody, hey, brother, can I ask something from you again? Over and over, <laughs> right? Amen? Okay, 
So, Matthew 28, 19, 20, God is commanded us to go and make disciples of all nations, sharing goodness of salvation. We know this one, right? That before Jesus Christ, you know, went, he gathered all his disciples and said to them, go and make disciples of all nations. So, me say we have to share the love of God so that a lot of people will be saved, will experience the love of God, especially nowadays. There's a lot of people who are suffering. You know, because of a lot of things that is happening around them, even in the families, and especially in the young people. Maybe you can see them, you know, smiling from the outside, but deep, deep inside, they're crying. And if you're not sensitive to that, you know, you miss the opportunity to share that love. Maybe that is the only moment that they have, that somebody would be able to say to them, hey, brother, I love you. Hey, brother, I think that, you know, I can see there is something going on with you, but because of your busyness or because you don't want to be interrupted with all the things you're doing, right? Sometimes we are like that. Sometimes we know and we know the person is already in need of something, but we are the, oh my gosh, I know this person is having some problem, but I don't have nothing to do with them, right? Because you don't want to be interrupted. So where is the love? Don't feel guilty, yeah? You know, later on, there will be an altar call, right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, the second truth of love in loving, uh, love, God love is life, okay, is what? Inviting. Okay? So, God love is inviting. And we can say, say, see that in Matthew 11, 28, 30. This is really a good exercise to the naked. Eh? <laughs> Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Imagine that. You don't even have to book an appointment. It's an open invitation. You know, sometimes if you will call your friend, and your friend already knew that you're in trouble, <laughs> I'm not for sure. He already read your messages, but pretending he doesn't even read it. Right? But God is inviting you. Whenever you are weary, he can give you rest. This is an open invitation by the one and only Jesus. If you're tired, if you're st struggling, he can give you rest. God is inviting you whenever you're lonely, whenever you're confused, or heartbroken. Maybe some of you here, oh my gosh, you know what? I love this person. Then all of a sudden, he saw somebody in the Facebook, you know, because they changed the picture of the person. Oh, that person is more beautiful than I am, right? <laughs> and he changed his love. We broke, broke up, right? So even in your, if you're discouraged and even when you are in your darkest moments, sometimes when we know that we are doing something that is not right in God, what is our tendency? Sometimes we drip away, right? No, nobody knows. Nobody knows. But God knows. Maybe the people around you doesn't know. When you're doing something that you know and you know is not right in God, that is the right time for you to go back. Because without you knowing him, you have been apart, drifted away. Right? And it's sometimes it takes a lot of courage for you to go back. But God is always waiting for you to come back. Okay? So... Your friends sometimes will only be around. You know, this is an honest thing, right? They're only around when things are okay, you're happy, blah, blah. But sometimes, you know, of course there are some faithful friends, don't get me wrong. But in most cases, because everybody has its own things on their plate already, and to, you know, to put another thing, unless it is, uh, what do you call this? Eat all you can, it's good to have a lot in your plates, right? But when it is a problem, <laughs> as much as possible, you want to remove <laughs> You know, whatever. So to add to another problem in your plate, sometimes it's going to be difficult, right? So that's why some of your friends don't be, you know, you say, oh, these people, they're only good when I'm able to give to them. Sometimes it's because it may be difficult for them as well, right? But not with God, okay? God will not judge you. He will meet you where you are, okay? He will meet you where you are. If you're in the kitchen, or where, even in the parking lot. I, did you hear that song? That he encountered God in the parking lot. Right? So even if you are in the mall or in your, wherever you are, right? God can meet you. Okay? 
He will welcome you with the loving arms. Like the story of the father and the prodigal son, right? Every day he's looking up in the window, seeing that one day he will be coming back. And when that son will come back, oh my gosh, he can wait, but he's the one who's, who runs. And there was even a celebration, right? That's what it says in, um, in the Bible, that if there is one that is saved or returned to the Father, the whole heaven celebrates, right? So don't minimize that one soul that you have uh, been winning, you know, for Christ. That one, is, that one soul is so precious to God, okay? His invitation is open 24-7, available. You don't even have to book, okay? He is just one prayer away. Amen? So before you sleep, let's see Matthew 6.30. It's so holy this hour, I know. Especially with the, with the lighting and the coziness of the place. As long as you will not snore because the other person might be awakened. Okay? So don't snore, okay? Okay. So Matthew 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. You know, sometimes we have a tendency after the blessings. You know, oh my gosh, you know, sister or brother, I won't be able to come to church because I have overtime, blah, 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 blah. Right? I know. Physically, we're not in the Philippines, but materi- uh, financially, we're so attached to them, right? There is a joke that here we have OHIP, okay? We have OHIP, pre- pre-hospitalization, but we are the OHIP the Philippines, right? <laughs> Every time that somebody will get sick there, you know, my gosh, especially if they call you in the middle of the night, that's not a good news. <laughs> Be ready to, you know, send money, okay? But, you know, praise the Lord that God has brought us to Canada so that we can be a blessing to others, okay? Just making sure that, you know, it doesn't interrupt, you know, of what we're doing to our, you know, relationship to God, okay? Don't run after the blessing, but plug in to the source of your blessing because God will not only provide for your needs, but he will also provide for your wants. Oh, my gosh, there's a lot of wants. The needs are just here. The wants are here and non-stop, right? The wants are here, going up and going up, right? So plug into the source of your blessing, okay? Because what? He is more than able. If he's able to create, you know, put orders in the heavens and everything, what you're asking is chicken to God, like this. But you need to know, you need to have relationship with him. Find time rather than running to the blessings, okay? Which someday you will get tired. Especially now, you know, March is a piling of income. And you will say, oh my God. I didn't even attend all these things just to have additional money and it just go to the tax. And you're so angry with the government, right? <laughs> Maybe they took all your money, right? Okay, so another truth, okay, the third truth on the life, God is love, is life. What is letter F? Forgiving. Oh my God. Honestly, we have a lot of issues with regards to forgiving. Please raise your hands. The kind of person that can easily forgive, honestly, or the lightning will strike you here and there, <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, no, right? Because pride will come in. You know, this person has me so much, and you want me to forgive him? No way, right? You know, in fact, you know, the Philippines, especially the oldest. Oh my gosh, they would even say, "Until I die." Oh my gosh, don't bring that on your grave, right? But sometimes because of the hurts, right? Sometimes even though that you want to forgive, you can't. But what God is telling us is, let's see in Romans 5, 8, 9. Okay. But God demonstrates his own love for us in the for sinners. Christ died for us. Imagine, God did not even ask you, hey, fix your mess first. Before I will, you know, worth it for me to die on the cross. Imagine all the sacrifices that I have 
and then you have a lot of mess, and then you want me to forgive you? Right? But God did not do that. Even while you were sinners, God already died for you and me. And then here you are, so proud, and say, you know what? I can wait for the time that that person will suffer more. In fact, I'm cursing her to the max. Right? Right? I can wait, and you'll be loving. Ha, 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 ha. Right? But praise the Lord, God is not like that. Okay? He didn't ask you to fix your messy life and to become righteous before he will forgive you. You just need to repent your sins. Of course, because you know what? God wants you to be, God always wants the best for you. Okay? God doesn't want you to continue the same thing that put you to, uh, that will harm you. That's why you just have to say, Lord, you know what? Lord, forgive me if I have hurt you. Forgive me for all the unrighteousness. But praise the Lord God that you still love me for who I am. Right? So, unlike me, as I said, it's temporary. Okay, I love you now, okay? You know, especially for husband and wives. <laughs> husband and wives, okay? Okay, I forgive you. Okay, just make sure don't do it again, okay? And then here you are, another the same incident, and uh, the wife would say, I told you I should have not forgiven you because you'll do it again, you know, right? And then we, are, we love so much of digging out, digging out the dead, right? Plus the interest, right? <laughs> so you don't totally forgive, right? You just say it in your lips, but in reality you don't, right? So it's only temporary and based on the set of conditions. I will forgive you if you do this, do, do that. And the person you said, what? Forgive about, forget about it. Just don't forgive me because you have a lot of please. Right? So when God forgives us, he doesn't have a list of things for us to do. He just asks you to repent because God wants the best for you so that you can reconcile back and experience the love of God more intensely, okay? So, and also, God makes us a new creation, the old is gone, and the new has come. So, he is not the one say, throw back, throw back. No. <laughs> Once you ask for forgiveness of God, you are totally new. You are a new creation. You start fresh. You are a new slate, right? No throw, throwing back, throwing back. No. It's only in the Facebook, okay? <laughs> and then you know what? God, you know, God is stubborn when it comes to love. Because why? You know the song, 99, 99, he will look for the one and leaves the 99 righteous, right? Because of the reckless love of God. He will continue to chase you, continue to chase you, hoping that one, he, you will find, he will find you or will find you. I don't know, whatever it is, okay? Reckless love of God, okay? In Matthew 6, 14, 15, let's see. For if... For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So my dear brothers and sisters, you know, right? You come to church every single Sunday. Maybe you attend the life group every single day in the week. And then there's a lot of things inside of your heart. Do you know that unforgiveness can result to bitterness? And it's a poison to your soul. Yeah, that's why, you know, sometimes people, you know, sometimes faith can speak a lot, eh? You don't, you don't have to, you know, they say that the eyes is the mirror of your soul. You can see that person trying to pretend that he's happy, but when you really look at the person, sister, I think you're hiding something. That's why my, my uh, group, they don't want to see me eyes to eye. eye, to eye. <laughs> right? Because you cannot, you cannot, uh, what do you call this? You cannot deny the truth, yeah. Sometimes you can pretend, but how do you pretend? So it's better for you to let go of all your, you know, uh, uh, especially now that you have the encounter, be real, right? Because, you know, even if you go or uh, go away, right? Uh, you go to, uh, take a flight, vacation, isn't it there is only certain um, weight that you can bring to your luggage? And the moment that you have extra, what's going to happen? You pay more. So that is the same thing. Because if you have from before and every single day, we are still on the flesh. My dear brother and sister, 
sins can still enter. And imagine there is already there. Start to put more. That's why, you know, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to be, you know, walking like this because we are a victorious Christian. And here you are, you're struggling your feet because there's so much, so much bitterness, so much unforgiveness. If God has forgiven you, who are you not to forgive others? You're a filthy rug. Do you know that? You're a filthy rug. But it's only because of God's love that you're able to walk in his righteousness and you have been forgiven. Okay? Okay. So let go of the past, especially your bitterness in your heart. Embrace the love of God to live in you. Okay? That should be your lifestyle. That's why, you know, when we're done with this, I don't care if a lot of you will hug me. I'm okay with that. Okay? I love that. Okay? Okay, the last one of the love is everlasting, of the poor truth. Okay? How is my time, hon? Okay, Romans 8, 38, 39. Okay, let's see. For I am convinced that neither death or nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present, the future nor any powers can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Okay? So, according to Apostle, separate us from the love of God. But there is only one thing that can separate us from the love of God. What do you think is that one thing? Huh? If you choose not to love Him. Because when God created us, he did not create a robot. Even though he's forming us, you know, he's the one who gives life to us, he did not create a robot. He gave us the will to choose either to love him or not to love him, to obey him or not to obey him. So that's the only thing that can separate if you choose not to love God. And there are some people who are like that. You know, that's why... You know, Second uh, Peter 3, 9 says, God still doesn't want anyone to perish. That's why he's slowing the thing. You know, that's why it is our responsibility to reach out to these people. Because despite of the stubbornness of people, God doesn't want them to perish. Okay? Oh, my God, Sister Banji, we only know that we have something to do after this. Okay, right? So we really have to reach out for these people because it is God's design, desire for them to come back to him. That's how God Okay? In Psalms 103, 17, 18, it says, God loves in Jew, uh, but from everlasting to everlasting, the love, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children, children. So imagine that the love of God's you know, transcends to generations, right? So if they, you know, after your next generation, especially for parents, isn't it that we're doing our very best to better off the generations of our children? So the same thing with God. He wants his love to transcend up to the generation to generation. So God loves endures forever. When we, when we say forever is forever. No beginning, no end. It's forever. Right? God love us no. Human love is temporal, as we as said a while ago, and conditional. God is a covenant love. The one who promised is faithful. So everything will pass away, but his words remain. Okay, that's why you need to know the love letter of so afraid to read the Bible because oh my gosh, there will be a lot of instructions, right? But those instructions is also for your good, right? Like the same thing when your parents are saying something to you, right? It's for your good. And sometimes we don't realize that until you fall into that. And then you come back to your parents and say, sorry mom, sorry dad, right? So the same thing, you know, it's so good that everything is here already. Everything about life, from beginning to end, right? So the only problem is, are you reading the love letter of God to you? Because unless you then you will be able to know the promises of God. Amen? 
Jesus is the same today and yesterday. Everlasting. Now, the question is, now that we know where the love is, where it came from, it came from the Lord, right? And because of God's love to us, we are able to share the love, okay? Now, the question is, how do you respond? Okay, Romans 12, 9. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Oh my gosh, nowadays it's so hard to find people who are sincere, right? It is even in the letters now, there is no sincerely yours. <laughs> Sometimes they just put whatever icons, they are comfortable, right? Because being sincere may be, it's kind of like really very challenging, right? So when we talk about, when we respond to God's love sincerely, it means to say, to say, you need to be genuine, not half-hearted, right? Genuine. Oh, Sister Badi, I don't even know the word genuine. And then look for that word in the dictionary. Okay, no hypocrisy, right? Because sometimes it's good, um, you can show it off every Sunday, and then the rest of the week, you know, you're no longer sincere with the faith that you have, with the love that you have for God. Amen? Let go, it says here, let go the evil things, cling to the new life that God has given you. Do you know that God has given you another opportunity to live a life? No, don't take that for granted. His death on the cross is not cheap, right? Who among you here will die for somebody is not really worth it because we're sinners? But he did that. He did that without any hesitation because of his love to the Father and because of his love for us. So we were given the new life. Make use of that life. Okay, make use of that life. Don't go back to the old life that you have. Okay? So, in order for a relationship, any kind of relationship to thrive and to grow, there are three C's. Remember these three C's, okay? One is you need to be committed. That's why it should be sincere. Right? You have to be committed. You know, even though, oh my gosh, I have been committed to my husband for 37 years. And it will be too late for me to change my mind. <laughs> or oh, even him, right? 37 years, oh my God, right? So because of the commitment, the covenant that we have. So the same thing, when you accepted the Lord, you made the covenant to the Lord, right? You made the covenant to the Lord. You need to be sincere and committed consistently. You know, any relationship that you will only do it whenever you want it, it will not last. You know what? I don't have time right now with you, okay? I don't feel good right now, so I will not come to church. I will not go to the life group and so on and so forth. You need to be consistent. The more that the enemy is attacking you, the more that you have to overcome that. That is the winner. Winner. You, you have to step up, right? Don't allow the enemy to just kick you, you know, punch you like this, right? Try to uh, fight back, Amen. Okay, and last is you need to care. You need to care for our, you know, for your brethren, for the teachings that is being given to you, given to you, right? Every single Sunday, you know, your leaders and each other, you have to care. And the same thing, the people who love you, you have to love them back, right? Okay, and then also part of being sincere, you have to give your toll. What is toll? T-A-L minus one L. Different spelling, okay? Tall, so give your time. You know, God has given us 24-7. How much of your time is you, uh, how much of that time you give to God? So maybe you just only give, oh, you know, Lord, you know, kind of like, you know, remember when you were eating something and something inserted in between of your teeth, what did you do? You pluck it right? That's why most of the time you're, <laughs> yeah, you pluck it up because it's uncomfortable, Right? That's why if you just insert God in um, many things that you do, the most, the first thing that you will do is to pluck it out. Because you're not sincere in that, in that time. That is always, oh, you know what? They will understand. I don't need to go, you know? And so on and so forth. The list can go, right? You need to really invest your time. 
any relationship, when there is no time involved, it will not prosper. It will not grow. It needs time. Quite time with the Lord, especially with the Lord, okay? So abilities, okay? Especially young people, okay? You have a lot of abilities for God's glory, okay? For the old people, you still have abilities by mentoring. Oh, they're not, they're not saying anything, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You can give your experience your abilities, how you live life, so that they will be encouraged, right? There are more in technologies, but when it comes to experience, how to do life, I think that is something that we have, that we grow all throughout the years of our experience. Amen? Amen. Okay. And then what is last with tall? So time, abilities, and of course, love. You really have to express your love. Not only because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I, it's good to say in Tagalog, okay? How many of us can speak Tagalog? Okay, it's so good in Tagalog. Uh, ano to? Wag lang sa nguso, kundi sa puso. No? So meaning to say, you don't just worship God out of your lips, but by doing it. It's like, you know, husband and wife. You've been telling to your wife, Oh, I love you. I love you. I am doing all the chores in the house. I love you. Not even one petal of the rose. Nothing, right? So love without <laughs> love without action. Love. Love. Just like the same, like what Jesus Christ did, right? He did just say, oh, I will die on the cross. He demonstrated it. He died on the cross. So the same thing to you, if you love the person, you don't just say it. It should be coupled with demonstration so that you really validate that you love the person. Okay? Amen. So that is love in action. Second, okay. Love the Lord. The second is, so sincerely, second is fully. Okay? Mark 12.30. Let's see what Mark 12.30. Lord, your God, with all. soul and with all of your mind and with all of your strength. You know, the reason why God has given us, you know, the life is not only to spend all this strength, all this uh, everything in this world that will pass away. Right? God wants to use our strength. You know why? Why God is still allow you to live? Don't you even ask that? Have you asked that? You should have been died. Died. Dead. Right? Like the thief, right? Because the thief has no choice, right? He has no more purpose. The reason that God, you know, uh, gives you the, the breath every single day is not only to use in this world, but hopefully you use that life to glorify him, right? Because what if God will took that away from you, the life? Or sometimes you don't have no more strength, Oh, what, Sister Vanji, I really want to serve the church. But look at me, I cannot even walk. Right? While you have the strength, all your strength to this world, that is no bad. I'm not saying it's not important, but if you really want, because one day we will face God, and he will take, you know, God is good in numbers. That's what everything is numbers. First day, second day, seven days. Right? So he will also take account of everything that you do with the precious life that you have given him. It's not all about in this world, right? How I wish that your pastor will be able to represent you, right? Unfortunately, it doesn't go that way, one by one. And you want, during that time, you're not like this. You're hiding. Even if you're hiding, God sees you. So it's so good that you can face him with, you know, what? I'm waiting the word. Don't you know that I, I, I forgot the word? That's why, right? Right? With all, with all what? You're not ashamed because you know and you know you don't just waste your life here. But the strength, the abilities, the time that God has has given you, you investing, you invested it for his glory. 
Okay, so it's not a waste of your time while you're here, while you're hearing this message, you know, even though, oh my God, Sister Bandy, just go there in Brampton, okay? Okay, you know what? God doesn't want him just to be your number two, number three. He wants him to be your number one. Because what? God is jealous God, right? God is not telling you not to love other people, but put him as your priority because everything will fall into place. Will fall into place, right? He should not just be an added thing to your busy life, like a thing that is being, as I said, you know, inserted in your teeth. That's why if it becomes uncomfortable, you and you pluck it is immediately. That's why you know when there is an event in the church that is something not your priority. You know, just I just gonna say sorry to them. I will. You know, you did not come and then you lie, right? Just double. <laughs> That's why when I said to my to my member, you know what? If you don't, come, just don't say anything. Because imagine you did not come and then you lie. So double, double charge, right? So just don't say anything, okay? It's between you and the Lord anyway, okay? So offer our body as our living sacrifice. Because why? The Holy Spirit is in here. So we don't just do what is kind of like not pleasing to God, especially with regards to our body, Okay? Number three, who? Number three, number three, compassionately, and we can see that in Mark twelve thirty one. Second, uh, the second is love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no command greater than this. Okay, because of the love of God, you were able to love others. That's why don't be. Uh, you know what we read a while ago. If you're not born again, you will not be able to have the love of God. Because it, you need to be regenerated so that the Spirit of God will dwell in you. That's why don't be uh, surprised. Oh, please, I remember. Don't be surprised if some people, it's so hard for them to love. Because the love of God, because they are not regenerated, they are not born of God, they are not able to have that capacity to love others. Okay? That's why believers and followers and we are saying that the love of God is in us it's the same thing they will be surprised are you really Christian I don't even see it. when we have a potluck you don't even put in something <laughs> but you're the one who's getting a lot right and then when we're telling you something about that you're the one who's not doing this right when we say hey sister let's go to this this and that let's pray for that person right and you know, and you know, somebody is coming to you and say, you know what, sister, I'm hungry. Oh, I will pray for you. Right? No, I'm hungry. And then you will say, man doesn't live by bread alone. <laughs> no, sister, I'm really hungry. Right? right? Be sensitive to the needs of the people. Right? Prayer is good. But, you know, it's more than good, you know, if you also share your material things, your time to that person. So that they will see, really, that love flows in you, right? You say, you know, you know, Christians are always just praying, praying. They're so, you know, their money is the stitch in their body, right? We're not like that. We're generous. But don't ask me later, okay? <laughs> okay, so, be needs of others, okay? The Bible says if you have the capacity, okay, to help others and you don't do it, you know what it's called? Sin, right? Because God has given you the privilege, the opportunity to bless others. The blessing is in your hands, and then you withhold it. That is called sin, S-I-N, okay? So look for opportunities, you know, look for opportunities, not only to pray, other, pray for others, but also share your time and your resources, okay? Be an ambassador of God's love by loving others. Okay, so as I close, oh, praise the Lord, she's closing now. <laughs> as I close my message today, okay, remember that God's love letter has been written to you, okay? Has been written to you. Now you're waiting, what is the next word, right? Okay, it's up to you to read it. 
to embrace his love. I pray that the message have touched our hearts. I know with all the things that is happening nowadays, sometimes, you know, we ask, where is the love with all of these things? And once again, the love has been written and it's in. So I pray that the love of God will abound to each and every one of us, not only today, but every single day. Amen and thank you. Thank you, Sister Banji. Thank you for a powerful and wonderful and timely um, message that you have shared to us. And again, uh, thank you for sharing your love to the Lord. And um, I can feel you right now with... Uh, um, again, um, where is the love? It's, um, it's a question that um, probably a lot of us are asking about it, right? And... Um, it's a question that prompts us to examine our, our, our lives, ourselves, and, um, and examine the presence and manifestation of love in our lives. And uh, just like what it was um, shared a few moments ago with our, <clears throat> with our dear sister, that um, we should often refer to, to the Bible, to the Word of God. Um, that's who we are. If you're trying to know and answer that question, where is the love? It's written in his words. All we need to do is always, just like when you purchase a new object, like a car, uh, a, a new uh, uh, electronic devices, it comes with an owner's manual. Uh, most of us tend to forget to uh, go through the manual and we just, okay, I know about it and I'll just go and ride a car and just drive. I just put it in the proper gear and it will go. But then again, it's entirely different when it comes in our lives. Just like with a question, where is the love? And if you are still trying to ponder with a question and you seem to be lost, look at the entireness of who you are now, the life, that loving, that inviting, that forgiving, that everlasting. It's a life that given to us by God uh, out of his abundance of, of love. And right now, um, just like what she has um, shared to us, she's challenging each one of us to um, answer back on how much do we love God. And we're opening the altar. I'll, I'll be calling the worship thing right now so we can um, have that moment to examine our lives, examine our who we are in the eyes of God. And um, we know that He created us in His own image and life. Yes, and if we're, if we're in that moment that we can even seem to see who we are, even facing the mirror, look inside your heart wherein the, our God who is loving has placed the Holy Spirit to guide us, to comfort us, to direct us, so that we will be able to see the light is placed in our in our hearts again as a challenge for each one of us if you find that love is just a word it's not love is full of life and god's love is an agape love that is unconditional it's not the same love that we have shared to other people or to any object love is god love is full of life and if you're in that moment in your life that you are in pain lost broken this is our opportunity to lay down everything to the lord and as we said february it's a month of love february 14 it's a lot of people are celebrating for couples who are into a relationship to spend time and quality right before we even go through that let us back to god for us to be able to share the proper love to our partner 
for our family, children. Again, it's a challenge. I know it's sometimes it's it's so difficult for us to go before the Lord the altar. But then again, if we're not going to open up, cry out to the Lord, and and and, and respond to that invitation that He's calling us, come, come. See, don't 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 be bothered by the people sitting beside you. If you want to cry out to the Lord, if you want to be prayed for, we have our pastors here, our leadership councils to pray for you. Or if you just want to express how much you love God without any reason, unlike other love, I love you because, because there's condition. But the love of God is different. It's un unconditional. He loves us in spite of or despite of our shortcomings, or in, in spite of our achievements, He doesn't look into our outer appearance. He's looking into our hearts. Church, the worship team will usher us in, in, in worship. Let's come before the Lord. Let's come before the Lord so that we will be able to, to really embrace the fullness of that joy, that fullness of life that He's given us by through his son Jesus Christ we're going to come to the altar surrendering everything thanking God for the love that he has given us it's, be it's just between you and God and as we sing feel free to come we will pray together or if you need prayer our leaders will pray for you amen amen hallelujah
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you for your love, O oh Lord. And we come before you, Father God, in, in awe of your boundless love for us. Thank you for demonstrating your love through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, in our lives. Lord, continue to help us, O oh Lord our God, comprehend the depth of your love and to live in response to it. May your love, O oh Lord, be the guiding force in our lives. And as we celebrate, O oh Lord, the love months, O oh Lord, let that true love that comes from you will come alive, O oh Lord, in us. That you will not allow us to, to stop hiding, O oh Lord, but we will now start living for you. Living for you, O oh Lord our God. That we will let that love, O oh Lord, come alive in our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Empower us, O oh Lord, to live a vessel of your love, spreading the light and hope in a world that is desperately in need of Jesus. And then, amen. 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 Let's extend our hands to heaven as we pray for the benediction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His radiant face shine upon you. Extending boundless grace and love. May His rested upon you. May the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit envelope us in the love and fellowship. And as we go from this place, know that you are love. Know that you are a blessing. That you are a blessed to be a blessing. That you are love to love. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, church. God bless everyone and see you again.